Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Die by the Sword podcast. Before we get in the episode, I wanted to give a shout out to Midnight Syndicate. You can check out their music over at MidnightSyndicate.com. Also, we'd like to thank Sword Coast Soundscapes for the wonderful ambient sounds you hear throughout our podcast. You can check them out at www.youtube.com slash Sword Coast Soundscapes. Contact us at DieByTheSwordPodcast at gmail.com and don't forget to leave a review on whatever you listen to us on. Now, this week's episode. going on guys hey hey so i was thinking we've played a lot of you know characters in the past some of us have only played a couple but others of us have played quite a few what is your favorite character that you have played in an rpg game hmm mine's probably uh conrad i like the character that i built he was he's a he's a tiefling swashbuckler monk character i based him like completely off of nightcrawler it was it's it's nightcrawler i'm playing nightcrawler <laughs> Ooh, that sounds fun that was in the reign of winter campaign correct yep that was reign of winter mm-hmm. that would um, be fun i think i created a good character but uh i i still have the problem of of uh just stealing a whole character and and putting him into a fantasy world but i guess we all do that right not the only one right kind of right well i I don't take like pre-made characters basically and put them in stuff but i'll kind of take some of the abilities of some yeah well i like to do that i just like to make it as close to the character i'm stealing as possible Mm -hmm. and build around that but that's my favorite what about you guys Mine is probably actually it's kind of an I, I've always I've started I've used names that kind of are reiterations of the character um in playing. And uh Chaubert is actually a iteration of the name, but it is the original character name was Robert from when I was <laughs> in like ninth grade, I think. And it was, you know, kind of one of those magical summers where you're with your buddies and you're all nerding out playing meeting up playing games all the time like as often as you can when you're a kid and uh he was like the first dungeons dragons character i ever created and he was a kind of like a robin hood clone okay like the human robin hood or the fox (laughs) oh nice (laughs) is it a kitsu (laughs) yeah kitsu name well, it's funny you say that, though, because that was kind of another favorite thing that we used to do was we used to play um, Robotech and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they are both done by Palladium, so they were the same system. So we would import our characters from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles over into the Robotech world. So we had like a uh, squadron of tigers and like, you know, other various like humanoid creatures piloting these Veritex and stuff. And it was... <laughs> I remember it being like the best thing ever. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, my favorite D and D character is, um, a dragonborn, um, ranger. Uh, his na- name was Maestan Gravelin. And that's actually a derivative off of another character I played, uh, previously, but it wasn't a D and D setting. It was, uh, based off of Babylon five. And I created a character based off of a race that showed up in like, you know, one episode. <laughs> so it was actually kind of fun. I got to make up the whole thing. It was really cool. <laughs> so what was the, what was the race? Uh, it was the race that was um, attached to the machine that was uh, on the planet that uh, was closest to the Babylon five station. And uh, I imagined that the machine, uh, the reason that there, there was only one of them is because the others of his race phased into another time because they saw that the problems were headed their way. And he was the last one waiting to help fix it. Hmm. Okay. 
Time Time Lord? Is it a Time Lord? Not a Time Lord. <laughs> no, he had no control over what was going to happen. He was just uh he just would phase through things. Interesting. I see for me it's hard because I've played through in so many different systems that I have like different favorite characters in each system that I've played. Yeah. I don't know which ones I like more. So like Pathfinder wise, you guys have already met a couple of mine that I would say are my favorites. In the Reign of Winter campaign that I, I, I play in with Philip, I've played uh, Hobbs, who's the moon cursed barbarian. Turns Love into that a character. tiger. He turns into a tiger. Yeah, because the moon curse, it's a, uh, an archetype of the barbarian. So instead of doing the typical rage, he shifts into a tiger. Oh, cool. I mean, that sounds cool to me. Just being able to turn into a tiger sounds awesome. Right. Right. And then at higher <laughs> higher levels, he's able to do a hybrid form so he can still hold on to like his great axe, but has the higher strength of like a tiger. I always pictured like, what is it? Kentaro? Yeah. Kind of like Kentaro uh, for Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. except he only has, you know, two arms instead of four. <laughs> I was picturing but, something from like Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> Could be that, too. He's basically a were tiger. Um, but he's really cool. Or straight up Tony the Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> Shao Kahn Ooh. in human, humanoid back, form. Back to the cereal talk? Is that what we're going with? <laughs> yeah. oh, no. no, back to cereal. Back to cereal. No. <laughs> Took a wrong turn. <laughs> <laughs> now my other favorite Pathfinder character is uh, he was from Richard's homebrew game and he is his name is On Deer. You guys have fought him before. He was the Suli Monk. See, I didn't play in that game, but the way you described him, um, I always thought of him as uh, uh, Jafar as a genie. Ooh. Kind of. I could kind of see that because he was he was lawful evil. So that fits the Jafar thing. Uh, he uh, Sulis are basically kind of genie blood. So he had that going for him. He was very elemental. He could turn his fists into fire, ice, electricity, acid had resistances to stuff. He could use key points to cast spells. Jetless John. <laughs> Very. Because <laughs> yeah, he was the uh, the archetype key gong. Uh, so that would allow him to use his key points to cast spells. Mm. So he was a really cool character. I wanted to continue playing him. I basically got him to like demigod status. But... It seems you do that with a lot of your characters. Well, when they last that long and they survive, then... Why not? <laughs> True. But yeah, I guess like not in the Pathfinder system. I've had other favorites like in Vampire the Masquerade. I played a really cool uh, vampire character. Um, he was the Tremere bloodline, which if you're if you know Vampire the Masquerade, you know what that means. If not, eh. Um, <laughs> the, We're not going to go into that in this episode. I mean, I would love I would love to play <laughs> through Vampire the Masquerade again. It's one of my favorite systems. There's um, always next Halloween. That's true. The The Tremere are blood mages, basically. So they use their blood to cast spells. Um, so he was really cool. And then I played in the Star Wars tabletop RPG. I played a, like a 14-year-old Padawan. Um, and he was basically working his way up to be- becoming a Jedi master. And he got these really like, like these premonitions and stuff that would uh, the GM would have to pull me aside and tell me all the stuff that he would learn from his premonitions. And I could choose what to share with the group. So do you think any of uh, the Padawans just stopped at Padawan and just dropped out? Like I can move stuff with my mind. That's enough for me. I mean, maybe <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go repair uh, speeders. Right. <laughs> Say I'm gonna go smoke some space weed <laughs> <laughs> or death, death sticks. Yeah. That's what they are in Star Wars. Death sticks. Those were just cigarettes, though, right? I think, or maybe. Was that a fun system? Because I've I've never played a Star. Wars. I mean, I love Star Wars. I mean, since I was a kid. But is oh, I, I had a blast playing it. I w- it's another one that I would love to go back to and play. See now, now that the Mandalorian is out, and it's just more than je- the. Ex- universe expanded i, I kind of want to do the same thing mm-hmm. maybe that's our next system we switch to star wars when we finish the book Uh-oh. we could pick another system we could i mean not the book but yeah. the, the adventure path right 
I mean, there's still three more books, so there's still lots of this show left. But <laughs> oh my, <boy. laughs> Keith, what about you? What are your your favorite characters you've played? Well, um, since I only have two that I've ever played, I have Cabal, as everyone knows, and then I have another one that is uh, named Obnixilis, that is a sorcerer um, that I played in a D&D campaign, which these guys, um, Gary and John, got me into it in the first place. And that was my first character, was um, the sorcerer. So this is only my second character ever, but I'm having a lot of fun with... Um, playing and everything so i mean i guess i would have to go with the first one the sorcerer because it was super fun uh researching trying to put it together and figure out all the rules and stuff so that was a lot of fun trying to uh learn how how everything worked so yeah yeah no i love building characters i love doing that yeah it's a fun it's a fun time and and especially like since i had no idea um, like what a sorcerer could do or in this place, what an inquisitor could do, like, yeah, researching what, you know, what all they can do and what all powers they have and what you can do with them is super fun. I like that part of the game. See, I, I have a, I have several characters already in my head that I want to play in the future of things I want to mm-hmm. create. I know Richard has talked about whenever he gets to start playing again, running through, uh, which one was it? Iron Fang Invasion, AP. Uh, from Pathfinder as well. And I've already got my character picked out for that one. Supposed to be a drow ranger, but he's a drow that wants to be part of the human society. Ah, he's he's kind of an outsider to his drow people. See, I like having characters with these really in-depth, deep backstories. (laughs) Me too. When they get so convoluted, you can't remember. Oh, I always remember. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Yeah, no, Thurskill and, and, uh, uh, Renly have a full novel, but it changes every time we play. <laughs> a lot of retconning going on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that that's fitting for a lot of characters, the retcon stuff. I had a, like a deep backstory for the, the 5e character that I'm playing along with uh, Keith Sorcerer and John is DMing that one. Um, he's a barbarian as well, but he rages a lot. <laughs> he does rage a lot. He's got a lot, of, a lot of pent up rage. But that game, there's so many players in that one. I don't feel like we have a chance to delve into characterization very That's much. True. Yeah, if we so. did that, our games would take forever. <laughs> oh, they would. There's a. Um, I saw a meme the other day about what if uh, a barbarian's uh, rage was tied to another emotion. Someone suggested sadness and. Uh, I think the prompt was, my barbarian starts to cry. (laughs) I'm dying to see an emo barbarian. Emo barbarian. (laughs) And I think the punchline of it was, the punchline was like, these tears aren't for me. (laughs) That's pretty good. I like like that. (laughs) I'm crying because of your impending death. Exactly. (laughs) I could always just go maniacal laughter and then it'd be like a clown. A, a Joker barbarian. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Just make him a barbarian and then. Uh, there's already a barbarian in this group. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Carry the one is uh, a solo act. Yeah, but you do music and stuff with yours. Like this one, he would do comedy, like, you know, the werewolf bard that you guys found before, Rakis. Uh, hmm. Or maybe a, a whole crew of barbarians, and it was just a circus. Ooh, oh, the, like a, the uh, what was the circus people? Oh, no, I was gonna say like uh, the boys to men, the barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bards to men. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, what was it? The crooked kin. The crooked kin. Yes. They were cool. Yeah. But uh, also, I mean. New Year's is approaching. So True. speaking Thank of speaking God. of characters, we will finally be out of 2020. So goodbye. Do you, you know, have any resolutions for your characters? My wish is that when we hit 2020, it just resets so we can do the whole year over again. <laughs> you mean 2021? Whoa, no. <laughs> no. 2020. <laughs> no. <laughs> we can make all the right choices. Ah, no. 
No, there's, you don't trust that. We'll no, do that? I've seen that a lot of people will make bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can relive that no, again. <laughs> no, no. Moving on. Going to 21. <laughs> Yeah, on to 21, which is hopefully better. (laughs) This time at New Year's, we will not give Richard the dice to roll for the next year. Oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) Absolutely not. And cue music. (laughs) (laughs) I miss that song. So it's been a minute since we've played because of holidays, but... What happened last time? You started in Chastel, finished up stuff there, and then traveled on and found the um, the tree, right? Yeah. That, that was last episode with the tree? The tree was definitely last episode. Uh, Chaubert doesn't really know because he still doesn't remember any of it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he still has no idea that he was you know, being digested by yeah, a that tree. That was the best tree ever. <laughs> <laughs> well... Dwarfy thought it was just playing hard to get. Yeah. Or easy to get, depending on who it was. And uh, let the listeners know that we didn't plan that for to be our Christmas episode, but I think that's the way it turned out, was our <laughs> get eaten by a tree. <laughs> oh, Christmas yeah. tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Right. <laughs> it is now a Christmas tree that ate you, not just a regular right. tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Harder. <laughs> Your vines are long now I'm questioning and the all- tangly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, after dealing with the tree, Chaubert, you know, getting digested basically and not realizing it because he never made his will save. Nope. Ever. Even, even with bonuses. <laughs> even Still with bonuses. Do it. Yeah. I think at one point I gave you a plus eight and you still failed. <laughs> yeah. The only time I did succeed was when uh, we did the fake roll, I think, for, for editing purposes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so you made your way toward Feldgrau after all of that. And uh, coming up over the hill, you found that you were approaching Feldgrau. Saw the cemetery that you basically have to walk through to get into Feldgrau. And a small army of burning skeletons. Yeah, that sounds that's going to be a problem. Yeah, it's fine. You're fine. We couldn't even beat a tree. Much less an <laughs> army of skeletons. <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't know what you mean. I'd say we should make a run for it, but Dwarfy wouldn't be able to keep up. That's right. Those little legs. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can cast reduce person on him and put him in a pocket. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Dwarf but I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You're level seven now, right? Or level eight? Whatever. What level are you? Eight. Level eight? Uh, eight. Level eight. Small army of skeletons is nothing. Okay. A skeleton by itself is like CR one half <laughs> or one third. There, there is there is only one pathway through, which means you have to go through the middle of these skeletons. So uh, arrange yourselves on the map where you'd be entering from on this uh, walkway here. Okay. Uh, we're rearranging ourselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Ad- adjust yourself. Diego's kind of happy where he's at on the road here. I'm assuming we're going to have to do some movement to get over to them. Mm-hmm. Diego's leading mm-hmm. the chart, bro. And I think Jobert's all right where he's at too. I guess. Yeah. Me and me and uh, Jobert are holding hands, so we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go a little meta. And just move Dwarfy up because he has terrible movement speed. Good idea. Okay. Good idea. So he's leading the charge, basically. Go, Dwarfy, go. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to say he's leading the charge. Uh, you're you're pushing him down the hill? Yes. Yeah, Diego's <laughs> behind him just saying, go. You, you first. <laughs> just, just pushing his back. Go. Go. Poking go. Him, poking him with an arrow <laughs> in the butt. Move it. Move it. So, sometimes it's not an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> It's not my thing either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as you guys uh, are making your way into this cemetery area, 
Uh, you have seen them for quite some time, so you do get a surprise round on them. And you get one action in the surprise round. Uh, and as we do that, we'll go ahead and roll for initiative. Right. Cool, cool. Cool. Uh, Diego. Dice Tower didn't help me. I got an eight. Eight. Yes. Dwarfy. Dwarfy got a 19. 19. Renly. Four. Four. Chobert. Uh, 16. 16. And Cabal. 19. 19. So who has the higher bonus between Cabal and Dwarfy? Uh, I got I one. Roll off. Roll off. All right. Oh, off the box. Twelve. All right. Three. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cabal goes first. Then. All right. So this surprise round is basically enough time for you to move up. It's for you to cast a spell that might buff you in some way or whatever you want to do. Okay. But we're starting with Cabal. Okay. So the first thing Cabal will do then is cast he's going to cast Divine divine Favor on himself. So that helps okay. with his uh, attack and damage rolls. Very good. Divine Favor on mm-hmm. Cabal. Dwarfy. Dwarfy is going to cast Protection from Evil Communal. Communal protection from evil. The regular spell for protection from evil lasts for one minute per level. For communal, it fun- functions as protection from evil, except you divide the duration in one minute, one minute intervals among the creatures touched. Okay. So I can only pick four of us then to get it? Five of us. I'm fifth level cleric, so five of us? Yes. And it would last one minute for each person. Okay, well, I mean, there's five of us, so there you go. Mm-hmm. So for, this is a long time. for ten rounds. All right. Uh, so each of you would gain um, a plus two deflection bonus to your AC and a plus two resistance bonus on saves. Yay. But only if these creatures are evil. True. Well, they're skeletons. They're evil. They're skeletons that are on fire. <laughs> they walk up and they're like, Hi, how are you? And you're like, Dang. Yeah. <laughs> ah, damn it. This is the nicest skeleton I've ever met. <laughs> Who wants to make s'mores off my burning skull? Anything I can do to help. <laughs> yeah, we might be the bad guys here. <laughs> They're just having their skeleton party, just hanging out in the graveyard where they should be. Right. They're just having a party. <laughs> They're having a bonfire yeah. with themselves. They just all lay in a pile, and then they make the bonfire. Yeah, and here we come. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's no saves or anything for you to make right now, so the second part of that spell doesn't do anything. And the third one, um, the spell prevents bodily contact by an evil summoned creature. They're not summoned, but if they were summoned, they wouldn't be able to touch you Ooh. with natural attacks. No, no, don't touch me there. This is my no no square. My no no square. <laughs> In fact, those are the words that the dwarfy say. All right. So protection from evil is cast for one minute on each of you. That brings us to Chaubert. Alright, so Chaubert sees these uh, skeletons in front of him, and he's kind of got advantage here, so he is going to take out his bow and try to get off a quick shot at uh, one of the guys here that's not too far from him, but uh, not too close either, so he's going to take out his bow and shoot. Okay. Uh, 14 on the first one. 14... His flat-footed AC, 14 is a hit. All right. And so with sneak attack damage, he is 
Oh my god, I rolled all twos uh, on that one. So that's <laughs> two, four, six, eight, and then I'll roll again. Thirteen points of damage total for the first one. So you said that it was thirteen points of damage. Yes. And what and type of weapon were you using? An arrow. So that would be so I guess piercing. piercing. Yeah, and I'm going to apply a debilitating injury to the guy too. Okay. Uh, because you're using a piercing weapon, it didn't do quite as much damage as you thought it would do. Mm-hmm. So it is still standing. And I'm going to apply the debilitating injury or effect of bewildered. So he'll have a minus two AC to anybody else, but a minus uh, four AC to me. Very good. Uh, all right, moving on to Diego. Just to be clear, um, that was you attacked the one beside you, Jobert? Uh Not beside me. He's pretty. Yeah, he's pretty far one. away from us. Okay, so Diego, he's going to run up to this guy. Will he be able to attack doing that far of a movement? Uh, not in a surprise round. Okay. The only way you can move and attack in a surprise round is if you do a five foot step. Oh well, I would. And then not be able to because five foot step is free. Yeah, wouldn't be able to do that here in any case. So I'm good. Yeah, but you moved up. You've positioned yourself closer. Yes. Right in the striking distance. Next up is Renly. Um, so Renly sees that these are skeletons, and he knows that he needs to grab the hammer to fight them. Mm-hmm. So he is going to do that very reluctantly. Oh, yeah. uh, so he's drawing his his uh, plus one shock war hammer, and his move is uh, going to be used to turn into Thurskill. Thurskill's back, bitches. <laughs> yeah. Glad to see Thurskill again. Uh, but since since I had to use a move to do that mechanically, that's all he does. Alrighty. And that is the surprise round. Okay. So we're starting at the top of the round with the skeletons, because they rolled really high on their initiative. They have a, a really high initiative. That's because they have no shoes and you can't hear them coming. Good point. <laughs> oh no, I feel like I'd hear all the clacking. <laughs> <laughs> Teeth chattering. And the, and the xylophone was, music? Just, Absolutely. I was going to oh, say yeah. that. <laughs> Lots of xylophone music. Let's see if I can find any xylophone music for this combat. <laughs> Alright. So, these guys. There's a lot of them. He moves down. Diego basically getting swarmed. Lovely. Oh hell no! No, we gotta no. we gotta get him out of this. Now's the time when I need to be aware, Kitty, because all these bones are. There. Guys, he's, he did this to himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Oh no! They all moved in. <laughs> uh, okay, so that is going to be. One skeleton that's attacking Dwarfy, and five skeletons that are attacking Diego. Re- remember, you got that plus two to your AC. <laughs> Good luck. <morning. laughs> so, just get to get the one oddball out of the way. We'll, we'll roll the one that's attacking uh, Dwarfy first. So while they're distracted with Diego, I think we should all make a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> We just circle around the cemetery and go out the other side. <laughs> yeah. All right, that is a 19 to hit uh, Dwarfy. Absolutely not. It's a miss on Dwarfy. So now we're going to go for the the ones attacking Diego. I'll kind of start from the bottom here and work my way around the circle. I love how we're doing this clockwise. It's so mechanical. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're German skeletons with their efficiency. <laughs> That's a 17. That is a miss. Next one is a 16. That is a miss. A 3. Definitely a miss. An 8. Not a good chance. 
And a 17. Good. I'm Diego's happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it, Abe. <clears throat> Just saw a barrage of broken scimitars come flying at you, but you're able to duck all of them. I love it. Like I picture Diego just like kind of dancing, almost like a almost like a ballet type thing. He's mm-hmm. thrillering right he... now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Might have got a little bit of a haircut with some of that. You hit my whisker. <laughs> oh, his balance is gonna be off. <laughs> Very good. Uh, all right, so that is the skeletons. That brings us to Cabal. Okay, so Cabal is going to move up north and attack the the skeleton that attacked Dwarfy with his punching dagger. Okay, that's an eighteen. That's all a right. hit. That's eight points of damage. Eight points of damage, and what type of damage That's is it? That's a great question. Yeah, it says piercing. Yeah. Piercing? All right. So eight points of piercing damage, so it doesn't quite do as much damage as you thought it would do, but it does a little Fantastic. bit. Fantastic. All right. Damage done. Next up is Dwarfy. Uh, Dwarfy is just going to chuckle just to himself. About trying to stab a skeleton, <laughs> uh, and then he is going to swing his silver war hammer. All right, uh, twenty-six. Definitely a hit. Ooh, max damage. Um, thirteen points of bludgeoning damage. Thirteen points of bludgeoning damage. And I need Dwarfy and Cabal to make a reflex save as this skeleton explodes in a burst of flame. I have a question about that. Uh Uh-huh. Does the skeleton that's uh, catty-corned to him have to make that same save? No, because it's immune to fire. Uh. (laughs) Ah. All right, reflex save for Dwarfy. Eleven. Okay. Twenty-one. 21. You both take two points of fire damage. Not as bad as I thought right. it was going to be, but I thought 21 was going to do way right. <laughs> well, you both saved. Oh, okay. <laughs> 11 was the DC. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. That brings us to Chaubert. Alright, uh, Chaubert... He is a little concerned about Diego getting surrounded over there. So he is going to uh, drop his bow and he's going to run up as close as he can get to Diego since he's surrounded. And he's going to attack the one to Diego's right. This guy here. um, With his uh, short, short sword. Um... And so that is a 23. 23 hits. And since he moved over 10 feet in the round, uh, he gets a sneak attack damage for a skirmisher. So that is 21 points of damage. And he'll apply the uh, disoriented, so the target takes a minus two on its attack rolls. Unless it attacks me, then it'll be a minus four. Well, you don't have to worry about it because that one explodes on a burst of fire. So Diego and Chaubert make a reflex save. Ooh. 22. 25. All right. You both take two points of fire damage. That fur is a little singed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate when my hair fur bursts into flames. Mm-hmm. Cats are flammable, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That brings us to Diego. Now, Diego, you are standing next to four of these guys, and they have uh, fire all over them, so they're radiating a lot of heat, which means you take... No. 
keep rolling. <laughs> you take 15 points oh, of fire oh. damage standing in the aura. Cat's on fire, people. Oh. <laughs> He's roasting poor Diego. But it is your turn. <laughs> okay, so Diego is going to take a five foot step back so that he's not so flammable. Okay. And he is going to begin punching Flurry of Blows against that one uh, skeleton that attacked him and missed and laugh at him as he hits him. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. So attacking this guy here. <laughs> yes, I am attacking that guy. All right. Uh, Attacking the guy to the northwest. To the northwest. And he's using his fists of flurry. And uh, the first one is a 25. That's a hit. Uh, The damage is... uh, Six points of damage. Okay. Second attack is a 15. That misses. Third attack is a 17. That hits. For five points of damage. And that skeleton explodes. So I need you to make another reflex save. Uh... 23. 23. Okay. Uh, So you take two points of damage from the uh, explosion, and you also punched into a flaming skeleton, so uh, you take another one point of damage from that. Hot, 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 hot. Kitty on fire! Hot cat. Kitty's still burning, baby. Hot cat, hot cat. Uh, I have one more... Cat is a punch. <laughs> one more punch. <laughs> I've got one more punch, so I'm going to right. direct it at the uh, skeleton, which has not accosted me, but looks like it needs a hit. Um, gotcha. The one in the southeast or southwest, excuse me. Southwest. And that is a sixteen. That hits. Oh, yay! Four. Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. And you take one point of fire damage. All right. So you've got a few of these knocked out of the way. And that brings us to Thurskill. Thurskill. Well, Thurskill is going to go... Let's see, how fast can he go? 30 feet? He's going to go to the to the very top. He's just going to take them out this order okay um so he's going to do that and swing his uh shocking war hammer um 25 definitely a hit that is seven points of bludgeoning damage plus five points of electricity damage and that skeleton explodes. So Thurskill, make a reflex save. Thurskill is going to make his reflex save, and that is an 11. Okay. You take two points of fire damage. Now, did, did I pass it? You did. One point, you said one point of fire, two points of fire damage? Two points of fire damage. Got it. Okay. Is that it for Thursko? That's all he can do right now. Very good. That brings us back to the top of the round with the skeletons. One will take a five foot step over. Another one will take a five foot step diagonally. One will take a five foot step in. That one will take a five foot step in. And that one's there. So now they can all attack. And guess what? Hey, goes around it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dang, he is. Someone just likes lighting this kitty up. <laughs> Cat's light fire, right? Totally. <laughs> All right. I used, one of my roommates used to have a cat, um, and we started a fire on Christmas, and that 
dumb old cat stuck his whole face into that fire. <gasps> Mel melted a couple of his... Well, he's fine. Well, he's not fine anymore because he's gone. But he was fine. But not because of the fire? Not because of the fire. But that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen a cat do. Was it Bernie? It was It was Seamus. Ah. I get it. But Bernie... <laughs> That's why I asked if it was Bernie. <laughs> It'd be a fitting right. name. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Skeleton 1 will attack Thurskill. It's a 17. Nope. Skeleton 2 will attack Chaubert. 14. Oh, thank God. Uh, the next three are going to attack Diego. <laughs> I'll probably all miss. I feel the love. It's good. Right. You know, uh, I don't want to throw this out here, but you haven't rolled a 20 yet, so... I it's time for a cat dance. Let's <laughs> <laughs> hope he didn't put you down for a cat nap. Ooh. Right. Uh, 18 for the first one on Diego. That was a miss. Seven. And... Three. Yay! Yes. <laughs> they all miss. They all have these guys have a plus zero to attack, so I just have to go what's on the die. <laughs> well, you know, I actually love this because I think our first encounter as a group together was against not flaming skeletons but regular skeletons, and we almost mm-hmm. got our asses handed to us that time. Right. And now this is kind of like cool to <laughs> have like the juxtaposition of like that versus this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's level one versus level eight. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is Cabal. All right. So um, he doesn't like that um, Dwarfy laughed at him for stabbing the uh, skeleton that they were fighting. So he's going to pull out his uh, longbow and pull out um, some blunt arrows. Oh, yeah. Let's get faded. Okay. He will not be laughed at. And uh, <laughs> he's also going to use his feet of um, rapid shot to shoot dose of the blunt arrow shoot dose so so the first the first one that's closest to him he's gonna shoot okay for 16 that hits for seven points of damage considering he had one hit point left he explodes nice but Sorry, Diego. Diego. <laughs> Diego. <laughs> I need you to make a reflex save. <laughs> this cat is dancing all over the place. Oh, yay. That was a good one. Uh, that would be a 27. Okay. And you take one point of fire damage. Still singeing, though. Still singeing. <laughs> Slowly burning <laughs> to a crisp. Someone's roasting this kitty. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, Cabal's going to use his second arrow to try to hit the skeleton again by Diego and see if he can burn him again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now it's just becoming a game. <laughs> All right. How much can we send Diego? All right. That's a 17. <laughs> 17 hits. Someone needs to save right. this cat from being spit roasted. <laughs> 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 or not. Uh, it's only six... It's only six points of damage, so I don't think you're, I don't think he's gonna die. All right, only six, so he's not he's not to that. But point you get yet. one more attack, right? No, I did my other one. I the first one but, I exploded on him. But don't you get two attacks uh, with the first every arrow. round now? Oh, yeah. do I? Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, I got I you, bro. Go again? If you got the <laughs> second attack, because <laughs> you All didn't right, move, well, so it's true. All right, well, then I'll pull out another arrow, hoping to singe Diego <laughs> once more. It's another blunt arrow or a regular arrow? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so <laughs> blunt. you get faded, okay. bro. <laughs> That's Diego a 19. looking up fire cats, fire cats. <laughs> <laughs> 19 hits. That's eight points of damage. And that skeleton explodes. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> All right, Diego, another uh, reflex save. Here we go. Uh, That would be a 22. All right, so you take two points of fire damage. 
Diego, I'll, I'll hear. I'll heal you after. Okay, I'm, just just I having fun. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up would be Dwarfy. Dwarfy is. I mean, he can make it up up to here, right? Yep. Yeah, he can totally do that. And he is yep. going to yeah. swing his mighty hammer. So he's going to move right beside Diego. Well, I mean, yeah. Leaving Cabal by himself. He's back. got a bow and arrow. He's fine. <laughs> All by myself. <laughs> that is a <laughs> 27. That hits. Uh, that is a, um, nine. Nine for the bludgeoning damage to the skeleton right in front of me. And that skeleton explodes. Oh yeah. So, Dwarfy and Diego both need to make another reflex save. <laughs> Fourteen. Twenty-two. <laughs> So we got a 14 and a 22. So you both take one point of fire damage. Yay! Do I take one point or two points? One point each. <laughs> yeah, you each take one. Cool. Alright. Alrighty. Next up would be Showbear. Alright. <clears throat> Diego looks at you and says, oh please, just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's just going to move up and through Thurskill space. He knows he's going to probably provoke an opportunity of attack, but he's going to try to get uh, flanking with this guy, uh, with Diego. Okay. Uh, so that would provoke from both skeletons. All right. The uh, first one, 16. Oh, that's going to be a miss. And the second's a 13. All right. So he makes it safely through. And so he is going to take a swipe at that guy in front of him, and that is a 22. That hits. All right. And that is... 17 points of damage. Considering he only had one, that's overkill, and he explodes. And All right. So and now, for the viewers at home, he was right in the middle of everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> so, Chaubert, Thurskill, Diego, and Dwarfy all need to make a reflex save. Dancing Kitty, one more time. All right, 30. 16 for Diego. 18 for Dwarfy, and 10 for Thurskill. 10 for Thurskill. So Thurskill takes 5 points of damage. Everybody else takes 2. Uh, for me, I, I guess I don't take any because I have the... Uh, what is it? Um, you have evasion? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Evasion. <laughs> Very good. So if you pass on a save, then you take no damage. With improved evasion, you only take half damage on a fail. Oh, dang. All right. Look into that. Uh, so since I moved, I don't get my second attack. Is that correct? Correct. Because you had more than just a five-foot step. Yeah. All righty. Next up in the initiative is Diego. Let's see, are you standing next to a... You're not standing next to a skeleton this time, so you don't take the aura damage. Thank you. <laughs> hey, we protected you, Diego. We protected you By that. exploding skeletons all around me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what friends are for. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, yeah, you get to take your turn as normal. Diego is going to take a five-foot step north to get closer to the skeleton that will hopefully explode and give himself Thurskill and Jobert <laughs> all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens. 
the first one is a 16. That hits. For 13 points of damage. And that last skeleton explodes. Reflex Ooh. saves. Reflex saves. And Dancing Kitty gets a 21. Okay. 24. Okay. 16. So you all take one point of fire damage from the explosion. And Diego did punch into fire, so he also <laughs> takes three three points of fire damage. <laughs> I'm going to need some gloves of asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you have taken care of all of these skeletons here at this point. Okay. On the map. So I do have a question real quick before mm-hmm. we move on for Diego. If his fists were silver, is he still incur that damage or no? Since they're like a different alloy. Yes. Cause he's still using a natural weapon. Oh, Okay. An arm strike or natural weapon I, would incur. That I feel damage. like Dwarfy's use of, of protection from evil was just wasted from these skeletons because I don't think that they would have hit us regardless. There was not uh, a hit from the skeletons that was above 20. True. But it took a lot of fun. But you still have it going. <laughs> yes. So have you been checking how many rounds you've been going? With it because it's still it's active. Active for a minute, so it's ten rounds. How many mm-hmm. rounds was that? Yeah, yeah. I think we went through six. Was it three? Uh, I've only I was only like three or three four. Times. I think. Yeah, I've only I think went three max. max. Yeah. Are we still oh, in yeah, initiative? Yeah, yeah. Because if not, it's. I mean, you are still in initiative because you have one round to do whatever you would like, and then the next wave of skeletons comes making its ah. way down. No. Okay, so then um, whose turn is it? Okay. I think Diego went last and killed the last one. And that would bring us to Ridley slash Thurskill. There's not a whole lot that he can really do. Um, Flex his muscles. I mean, kind of. Yeah, he's going to... I mean, yeah. Thurskill's just... Is, Gonna hold, I guess. Because he's got nothing. Okay. Can we change that Indiana Jones spell for rainfall? (laughs) (laughs) Create water. Drink enough beer and I've got a create water spell. (laughs) It's like magic. (laughs) I mean, I'm approaching that. So next up in initiative would be Cabal. Okay, so Cabal will move up and heal Diego with Cure Moderate. 14 points of healing. That feels great. (laughs) (laughs) And then Cabal will move up with his homies. Okay. Uh, then Dwarfy. Dwarfy is going to channel. We all took that fire damage. Uh, and that is seven points of healing for everybody. On 3d6? On 3d6. (laughs) Dang. Got... I mean, it's better than nothing. He got, you know, <laughs> one zero. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chaubert. All right. So Chaubert is going to run the little bit back that he dropped his bow and then pick up his bow and then come back basically into position with the party. <laughs> okay. Uh, Diego. Um, hmm. Diego is not going to go charging into these things again. That was a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> or maybe just do one at a time. One at a time seems to be a better, better strategy. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> Diego will move a little to the West to see if he can, uh, 
pull one over towards him and not have all of them surrounding everyone. Very good. Okay. And was there anything else that Renly wanted to, or Thurskel wanted to do? I know he held last. I mean, he's finished. Thurskel is definitely a, uh, one to jump into the fray. So he is going to move up, uh, in front of the party. So he's about, what do you say? 20 feet in front of everybody right now. Okay. Yeah, about that. Yep, about that. All right. And now this is the round that the next wave of skeletons makes their way to you. You see more of the burning skeletons, but not quite as many of those this time. But you also see two skeletons that are wearing full armor and carrying huge long swords. Do we have to do a check, or does Thurskel recognize these monsters? Thurskel, I don't know if he is... I'm sure he's probably seen some in his battles. Renly would definitely recognize it uh, from the, one of the dreams that he had. Okay. In fact, you would all recognize them from the dream that you had. And we would recognize them as... Skeletal champions. Yeah, that's what I thought they were, but... Uh, no, Thurskull had fought a skeletal champion. Remember, that was the whole thing. Did he? Okay. So, as these skeletons move in, uh, four of the burning skeletons basically surround Thurskull, and two of the skeletal champions are also around Thurskull. Um, the other two flaming skeletons are making their way over to where Diego is trying to uh, bait them to go. Well, I got two. Come here, kitties. Come here. So we'll start with the flaming skeletons, because we all know how those work. So I'll go clockwise again. Flames, flames, flames. First one. Natural one. Oh. To confirm. Uh, does a 19 hit? No, it don't. So that is a confirmed fumble from the first skeleton. Uh-oh. <laughs> Head falls right off. <laughs> so he's, off, he's not on fire anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> His flames go out. And he covers himself in chain. Shoot. Okay, he is using a melee weapon. Uh, fling. He drops his weapon and it lands 1d6 squares away in a random direction. Is it my d6 or your d6? You go ahead and roll the d6. Six. So full six squares. And you also roll a d8 to determine which direction it goes. Three. Three, which is this direction. So it's going to the northeast. So his... uh, his sword goes flying three squares to the northeast, so it's up here next to this fence post in the corner. I picture like he has a uh, like maybe the skeleton doesn't have all his fingers, so when he takes a swipe, he's like really just trying to swing for the fences, and uh, <laughs> when he Whoop. swings through, he just loses it. There we go. Slippery suckers. Too, yeah, too good a form. Too, yeah. too much power. Too strong. Right. Oops. All right. Uh, skeleton number two. It's a three. Nope. Skeleton four. Or three. Okay. Uh, that's a 16. Uh-uh. Four. It's a 17. No. And now where the fun ones come in, the two skeletal champions will attack. So the first one... a nine. He rolled low. No. And the second one is a 25. Ooh, that one just hits. Just hits. One away from a critical threat. 
And that is 10 points of damage from the Skeletal Champion. Oof. As he swings this massive longsword at you. So slashing? Slashing. I've been slashed. All right. All right. And those are the skeletons. Next up is Cabal. So Cabal is going to try to help Thurskill and uh, get some of those um, or get some of those skeletons away from him. So he will load up the longbow again uh, and double up on some blunt okay. arrows. Oh yeah. I'm a little disappointed you didn't go double up. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. There you go. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Okay. Uh, Twenty-one to hit. That's a hit. Nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. And uh, which skeleton are you aiming for? The one in front of uh, Jobert that's to the southeast of... Yeah, the that Thursko. One. Well, yep. he explodes. <laughs> yes! So Thursko, make a reflex save. Oh no. Nine. Thursko takes five points of fire damage. Right. Okay. okay. And the, the second blunt arrow comes in. Seventeen. That's a hit. And which one's this aiming at? Um, to uh, Thurskill's right. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go with seven seven points of blunt damage. That one still stands. All right. Next up would be Dwarfy. All right, Dwarfy is... Where is he? Way back in the back. There he goes. Behind Cabal. Ooh, 5, 10, 15. Classic mm-hmm. Dwarfy hiding in the back. He's hiding <laughs> something in the back. Oh! Is it a dump truck? <laughs> oh, it's a dump truck. All right, he can get to here. He's going to get to there and, and swing his hammer. All right. Swing at the one to the left of Thurskill. Right. Correct. Um, that's probably not going to do it. That is 14. 14 misses. Womp womp. It's one of the first misses on these things. Okay. Next up is Chaubert. <clears throat> Chaubert is going to try to go after one of these newer looking guys. So he is going to move here and then up to here and then diagonal here. So he's moving total 30 feet, um, but he's kind of taking the okay. long way around uh, so as not to get any opportunities of attack. And so he's going to attack the one of those new skeleton skeletal champion on the right. Skeleton champion. That's who. That's what it's called. Yeah, the guy on the right, and that is a oh, uh, twenty nine. Definitely a hit. That would hit most things. <laughs> Alrighty. That's sixteen points of damage, and he's gonna apply the bewildered effect to it, which is a minus two AC. Okay. Points damage, and it's not a bludgeoning weapon, so a little bit less damage. But he's still standing. Next up is Diego. Okay, so Diego is going to go take a five foot step north and attack this guy who's running at this uh, flaming skeleton that's running at him. Okay. And he's going to again use Fists of Flurry again. That would be a 27. That hits. For four, uh, no, eight points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, still standing. And that is a 23. That hits. For six points of bludgeoning damage. And he explodes. Kaboom! Shocking. Do we need a reflex save? Hmm, let's see. Uh, he got a 
30. You take one point of fire damage from that, and because you also punched into fire, six points of damage for punching into fire. So is it a total of six, or is it... Uh, you got six for punching into fire and one for it exploding. So seven total. And that brings us to Thurskill. Uh, so Thurskill is surrounded by three of these burning skeletons, so he Wait, will he wants take... to take a five-foot step. Must the start of your turn. Eleven points of fire Eleven. damage for being in the aura of, of three of these. Good lord. It's hot. It's like a sauna. So what Thurskill is going to do, I mean... He's just gonna attack like he always does. So I am going to, you know, I'm I'm gonna do the one that's catty cornered Thurskill and the skeletal champion right here that Jobert was working on. Okay, that has a minus two AC right now. And then with his shocking warhammer, he does. Ooh. Uh. Fourteen. That misses. Oh no! Even with the minus two. Oh, even with the minus two? Oh, even no. with the minus two. No, he should have went for the skeleton. Well, the flaming ones, anyway. All right, well, that's his turn. All righty. Is he going to stay where he's at? He's going to move or anything? You know what? He's going to back up just to scooch. Just, just because oh, it's... No. uh A lot of fire. I mean, he just took, what was it? Six, seven points of... Radiant fire damage? 11. 11. 11. So, yeah. Kitchen's too hot. He's, he's got to step back. Stepping out of the steam room. Alrighty. That brings us to the skeletal champions. One will step in. The other one will stay where he's at. One is going to swing at Chaubert. Out of the box. And that is in 19 to hit, Chobert. Oh, good. Miss. And then one will swing at Thurskill. That is an 18. Miss. Um, I'm going to ask this question, though. Um, mm -hmm. Have we hit a full minute for Dwarfy's uh, protection from evil? Uh, this would only be like round six, I believe. So you still have like four cool. more rounds. All right. Uh, okay, and that's the skeletal champions. Now it's the regular skeletons. Skeleton. One of the, the flaming skeletons will move around in a flanking position to Chaubert. Uh, but to do so, he will provoke from Chaubert. Ooh. <laughs> Chaubert's going to taste of his own medicine, but uh, happy to get an attack off, I guess. <laughs> but that is. Oh, shit. Nice. Uh, critical threat. So a 19 is what I already rolled. So. Okay. Definitely hit. Roll to confirm. Alrighty. Uh, ooh, 29. That's a confirmed critical. And uh, you're using which type of weapon? My short sword. Short sword. Uh, piercing. Piercing. Weird. Uh, so the last half of this doesn't really count because um, it would it's not able to because it's the crit card is infection double damage and target contracts filth fever but it's already dead so it can't contract filth fever it probably already has it uh, <laughs> yeah. that's how, that's how it that's died, how in, the died in the first place <laughs> <laughs> so just double just double damage so just double damage alright so 11 11 okay so he is still standing that one moves there. So we've got a skeleton that has moved around to flank the Chaubert after taking an attack of opportunity. We do have a flaming skeleton that will attack Dwarfy, a flaming skeleton that will attack Thurskill, and one that will move in to attack Diego. And they're all going to miss, probably. All right, against Chaubert. Uh, four. So close. <laughs> <laughs> Against Thurskill. Five. Nope. 
against Dwarfy. Eleven. Uh uh. And against Diego. Ten. No. <laughs> These burning skeletons are so great at attacking. Uh, Cabal. All right. So he's gonna he's gonna bring up the uh, the trusty bow again with some blunt arrows, starting exploding some okay. skeletons. So I will um, I will attack the champion that is attacking Thurskill. Very good. Seventeen. That's a miss. Ooh. All right. So we'll see if we can get him with the second arrow. Twenty-one. Bad hits. That's better. All right. Perfect. All right. And then let's roll some damage. Ten points of damage. Okay. Ten points of damage with a blunt arrow. Yes, sir. Right, he is still standing. Ooh. Ooh. He's so strong. Well, he's a champion, so... <laughs> That's true. He doesn't get that name just willy-nilly, Exactly. Right? He's got to earn it somehow. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. So that's two arrows fly into this skeletal champion. Anything else from Cabal? Um, he'll move five feet forward. Okay. Just to get a little close, but he doesn't want any any skeletons exploding on him. You know? Gotcha. He's not, he's not <laughs> feeling that. Nah, nah. He, he likes, likes his life total. With meat on their bones. Right. Now it was a fat skeleton, maybe. He big boned. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dwarfy. Dwarfy is going to swing his hammer. Here we go. Uh, to the the to the skeleton that is directly in front of him. Okay. Uh, twenty one. That hits. That is uh, eight bludgeoning. Eight bludgeoning. That skeleton is still standing. Oh, come on. And that's all that he's going to do. Okay. Next up is Showbear. Their skill moved out of any flanking position for Showbear, so he... Yeah, actually, you know what? He's just going to attack. He's just going to straight up attack the uh, flaming skeleton to his right okay. there, since he's being flanked. And that is uh, 29. That hits. And that is uh, 9 points of damage. And that skeleton explodes. Ooh. Reflex save from Showbear. Uh, 20. Okay. And you take one point of fire damage. All right. And with evasion, so he'll take... Uh, he'll avoid it all, so that'll be great. No points of fire damage. I mean, there's only one. You can't even take one. Jeez. <laughs> all right. Uh, Diego. Okay, so Diego now has one solitary, lonely, flaming skeleton in front of him. Mm-hmm. So he will hit this one lonely, solitary, flaming skeleton. Okay. Uh, that is a 15. That is a miss. Ooh, he hits again. For a 25. 25, 25. is a hit. <laughs> <laughs> That's called brain math. <laughs> it takes a while for it to get there. <laughs> but yes, 25 is a hit. Yes. It's hopefully a 26 response. Uh, so, that is 12 points of bludgeoning damage. And he explodes. Lovely! So another reflex save from Diego. Ugh, that one was a 20. So you take one point of fire damage from the explosion, and because you punched into fire again. Another four points of damage. Feeling crispy. Crispy kitty. 
Alrighty. Uh, Thurskill. Alright. Thurskill is going to swing his hammer. And that's... 15? Uh, he's swinging... Oh, that's a great question. Um, he... Yeah, three options. Yes, he's going to swing it at the one that's catty corner to him, uh, and uh, n- kind of next to Jobert ish. So catty order to him and Jobert. Which? Okay. Is blanking. It is. Uh, so that is a hit because you are flanking. Sweet. That, oh, that's. If you- if you weren't flanking, that would have been a miss. Ooh, I'm glad that I was flanking. Um, that's five uh, from the hammer and four from the electricity. And that skeleton explodes. So Thurskill and Chaubert need a reflex save. All right. 25. 21. You both take one point of damage. Or Chaubert takes zero. <laughs> I think I think their skill's gonna take zero too. No, you don't have evasion. You can't just pick and choose. Alright. Uh that brings us to the top of the round, so this will be round seven, I believe. So the skeletal champions will go. First one will swing at Chaubert. Natural twenty. Oh, no. I've been waiting for one. I hadn't hit you one know yet. what? You've rolled a lot of dice tonight. And I'm surprised that it took this long. Right? But I don't think that confirms because that's only a 17. Oh, good. So okay. not a critical, just a hit. And that is... Six points of damage from the long sword, and then the next skeletal champion. He's got two options to swing at either Thurskill or Dwarfy. Let's see. I'll do percentile to figure out who to go after. Uh, Fifty-one and up is Thurskill. Fifty and below because it's the shorter numbers. Is Dwarfy. <laughs> uh, Sixty-eight. So he's going after Thurskill. Uh, 14. So that that's is a miss. miss. Okay. Then we have the one lonely burning skeleton. That's all that's left. Yep. He will swing at Dwarfy. Uh, he's the one that doesn't have a weapon, so he's using his claws. First claw. 12. No. Second claw. 7. No. I'm rolling like crap tonight. I'm fine with it. <laughs> it's an easy fight for you guys. It's just a lot of them. All right, next up in the initiative is Cabal. Okay, so they look like they've got it handled, right? And I'm looking at Diego, and he's just, he is just severely burned and battered. So I'm going to cure him, uh, do a cure moderate on him. Okay. So 16 points back to him. Nice. There you go, Diego. Turn that frown upside down. lots and lots of things. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) Not looking so crispy. Yeah. And then... And then he'll step up five feet behind Thurskill. Alrighty. That brings us to Dwarfy, who is standing next to a skeleton, so you... Well, Thurskill is also, but it's not the start of Thurskill's turn. But Dwarfy is standing next to a skeleton. We take one point of damage. Take six points of damage from the aura. Six points minus five. Nine. Minus nine. So I heal. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so is it is it Dwarfy's turn? It is Dwarfy's turn. Swing that hammer. S- Sixteen. On the Skele- flaming skeleton. On the skele- yeah, on the flaming skeleton. 
Then that's a hit. Sweet. Okay. Ah, um, max damage. So that is 13 points of bludgeoning damage. And that skeleton explodes. Dwarfy and Thurskel, I need to make a <laughs> reflex save. Um, 16 for Dwarfy. Okay. Nine for Thurskel. Uh, Thurskel takes three points of damage, and Dwarfy takes one. All right. That brings us to Shobert. Um, Shobert can't safely move around this guy, so he's just going to have to attack. He could do an acrobatics thing. Mm -hmm. Try to get through a square. To flank somebody. You know what? You know what? I like that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to... I'm going to do a little acrobatics move and move through this one uh, champion square to try to flank the other champion with third scale. Okay. 31. 31. You're able to uh, tumble your way through the skeleton's legs. All right. <laughs> and then I'm going to attack the one that now I'm flanking with thirst skill. Okay. And, ooh, that's going to be a 17. That is a miss. Even with the flank. Ow. Even with the flank. Gah. Dang diggity dang. Skeletal champions have higher AC. It's a cool tumble move, though. Yeah, no, I, I saw it. it was... <laughs> yeah. Right through the legs, swings around, and misses. <laughs> All right, and that brings us to Diego. So Diego is pretty far away because he's been dealing with the flamey ones over to the west. So he's going to run up to the champion by Dwarfy. Noting that it's not flaming is really going to love punching this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to burn. It's not going to burn. Not going to burn. But he's going to try uh, his flurry of blows. Okay. So that was nice. A 29. That hits. For 11 points of uh damage, bludgeoning. And that skeleton is dead again. Dun dun dun. He's re-dead. You're not only dead, you're dead again. Dead dead. Or as hey. Zenobia would say, dead dead dead. Dead dead dead. So I that's going to be it because I did, did my move and I also that was my action. So. Yep. He's not close. The other one's not close enough for you to attack from where you are. No. Alrighty. Uh, third scale. Um. Well, I mean, since that one is dead, I'm going to. I'm going to go around and flank with Jobert. Okay. We're going to go around the long yeah. way and get there without provoking. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swing this hammer. I don't think that's going to do it. Uh, that is a 14 plus flanking. That is a, that is a miss. Mm, not good. It said nine. It sure did. Alrighty. And it is the skeletal champion's turn. He has two options here of who to attack. Between Shobir and Thurskill. So we'll go 51 and up for Thurskill, 50 and below Chaubert. 28, so he's going after Chaubert. Uh-oh. Come on. And that's an 11, so he misses. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, next up is Cabal. Okay, so Cabal's just going to, like, run up to this dude and 
punch him with this punching okay. dagger. Eighteen. That is a miss. Oh, so Dang. strong! <laughs> I'm so scared. All right, you hit him in his strong hand. <laughs> Take my little hand, it's stronger. Get it away from me! Uh, that'll bring us to Dwarfy. Dwarfy is going to just step up real quick. Five foot step, swing his hammer. Do all the things that are... Now we got him True. surrounded. Who's going to catch on fire? I was about to say, which one of us is going to explode? Um, I'm sure Diego is still small right <laughs> that's giving the smoldering eye. That's not going to do it. That's a twenty. Uh, not a twenty-four. A fourteen. Fourteen mm. misses. No smoky eye. <laughs> I'm sure it's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dwarfy didn't quite finish him off. Let's see if Showbear can do it. All right. Oh, yes. Uh, that is a 29. That hits. All right. Finish him. Finish him. 32 points of damage. <laughs> 32 points of damage. So even uh, without using a bludgeoning weapon, uh, that skeleton Sweet. is dead. We did it, Woo-hoo. you guys. And no but explosion. It, it doesn't explode. It just dies. Aww. Well, I mean, this was a pretty hard graveyard. Should we rest? Do you want mm-hmm. rest in the graveyard? I was going to say, some more skeletons can show how, up. How do you know there's not another <laughs> wave that's Very coming. true. I mean, we could just go into the sarcophagi that they were from, because we know that nobody's coming out of those. <laughs> they respawn. <laughs> Every 45 minutes. It's like a video game. All right. Well, <laughs> right. Dwarfy is going to channel. All right. Uh, everybody, 14 points of healing. All right. Here, let me put that into my... Oh, wait. I didn't take any damage. <laughs> <laughs> my fur says yes. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, we've defeated everybody in this graveyard. Where do we go from here? So, can we tell? Does it look safe? Um, you'd probably want to do watches because it's not. You figure if there's this much wandering undead, there might be more. Oh, what time of day is it, by the way? Oh, it's nighttime. It's definitely it's night. By the time okay. Get here. Okay. Well, um, I think we will do that. We will take watches. Uh, all right. So you guys decide you are going to sleep here in the cemetery, uh, setting up watches. So who is doing what watch order? I think this is a terrible idea. I mean, we just fought a whole bunch of skeletons and we're going to camp out in a cemetery. We're crazy like that. We, I guess so. I mean... Yeah, but those, the skeletons were true. weak sauce, though. We're That's fine. very true. We just, My fur <laughs> disagrees. We just need to throw rocks at them or something <laughs> so that we're not next to them when they right? explode. <laughs> True. But at least the good thing is, I mean, you know, there's werewolves nearby and you got lots of bones around. So just grab a bone and throw it and, it'll, you know, the werewolf will take off. I do grab my bone <laughs> in the middle of the night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's first on watch? Uh, Shibero will go first. Okay. Dwarfy will go second. Okay. Dwarfy second. Who's third? Renly might as well. Okay. And who's fourth? I guess Kabbalah Cabal- go after fourth. him, I guess. And then Diego will take it up the rear. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> it's fitting for the fur. <laughs> you do know it's almost Jesus' uh, birthday, right? <laughs> or at this point, it's no, after. just passed. That would be exactly what uh, Diego would say. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you all make it through your watches uneventfully. Uh, so you guys uh, get up the next morning, uh, probably somewhere around like first light or so to continue your way into Feldgrau. 
Um, as you start making your way toward Feldrial, near, nearing the town, you start seeing some of these like old abandoned houses, kind of like the one with the, the big tree that you fought before, but there's no trees. I mean, there's trees, but there's not oh, God. like oh, they're oh, not God. Car- carnivorous trees like the other one. <laughs> I was going to say. So you see those um, as you're walking by these houses. Have Dwarfy give me a perception check. Dwarfy is going to. Oh, that's not Dwarfy's die. This is Dwarfy's die. Is it because he likes trees so much? 22. <laughs> 22. He notices these because of the stone foundations around the bottom of these houses. He recognizes that there is these strange runes carved into the bottom of these houses. And there, as he goes to get a closer look at one of them, he can see that the runes kind of have like dried blood Mm. in them. Okay. And he turns to each of you and says, I've seen these before. These, these were at Harrowstone. It's the, it's, it's the same the same runes that I saw there before. I know none of you were here with me then, but I we didn't know what they were before, but I, I can assume that it's something with the whispering way. And you can't read them, can you? D- did you ever figure out what they meant? No. Uh, it's a little bit beyond what I... Let me focus on them for a minute, see if I can recognize any of the the magics from them. Uh, something with religion or something with magic. Have any of you seen anything like this? The group that I was with before, they they weren't able to recognize them. So it'd be a knowledge arcana or a knowledge religion. Cabal rolled a 19 for uh, arcana. 20, 19 arcana? 24 for uh, uh, arcana with uh, Renly. Diego got a 20 on religion. Okay. Between everybody kind of working together, talking through these runes, you're able to to determine that these are necromantic in origin, and it's basically um, a way to try to control the dead that are here. So they need to be destroyed? It's basically they're they're old spells, so it's not because um, the blood is dry, right? So you would assume that basically the whispering way is trying to animate the dead from Feldgrau and trying to control them. Well, I mean, they did a pretty good job earlier, right? True. <laughs> so we do know that the whispering way was responsible for the graveyard fight. With this information, you have an idea. Yeah. With this information, you have that idea. I, I, I fear this this town may be tainted. The Whispering Way have obviously been through here. I think we should be on guard and roll as many um, sense motive checks as possible. Um, who has knowledge geography? Renly does. Or knowledge history. Knowledge history would be better. Renly has all the knowledges. Yeah, Cabal's pretty... Uh, knowledge good. history or, gonna, or knowledge what? Diego has a plus six in, in history. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll your knowledge histories. 18 for Diego. Ooh. 11 for Renly. Uh, but let's see. You said it was knowledge history or knowledge. What was the other one? Geography. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, those of you who rolled above 20 would remember from things that you've heard that uh, Feldgrau was the site of a major battle that basically everything in this area that was once the kind of this nice, luscious, fertile area has basically become a wasteland because of all the, the spells and necromantic magic and stuff that's happened here. 
you would know that some of there are stories that some undead haunt this area on their own, just based on the battles and the way they died. Right. But you would also know that while you did fight a small army of burning skeletons, that that is just a minuscule amount of the undead that are on this battlefield that you're standing on. So there would be thousands of undead here for the Whispering Away to raise. I don't know, like Cabal's Dream? Right, exactly. So we've got we've to gotta stop that premonition from happening. Pretty much. So, yeah. So I tell the gr- I tell the group that and say that we've got to hurry before they can raise more undead. Okay. Would it do any good to destroy the runes? Yeah, you could try it. But you don't know for sure what it would do, but you could try it. Did we it. already try that? It's been so long. At Harrowstone, they. They didn't worry with it because the magic had basically run out of those that were used. Right. Wait, then can we do a detect magic? Yeah, you can detect magic on them. Oh, well, then I detect magic uh, both Renly and Dwarfy. They are both detecting faint auras of necromantic magic. So these are still active. All right. Yes. You would assume that based on this and what Dwarfy has said from Harrowstone that the Whispering Way allowed... They basically dispelled the magic at at Harrowstone to let the undead do whatever they wanted there. But it was basically a way to control them to get in and get out with whatever they needed. Here, they're still active, so they're still able to control the undead here. So what do we do, guys? Do we want to destroy these bad boys? Or do we want to keep I mean, going? how many are there? How many are we talking about? Is like every is there hundreds or I mean these ruins are written all around the foundation of these houses. So if we do we destroy the ruins, pass by. we level the town. We'd have to level the whole town. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't think, think that you know possible. some strangers coming in knocking down your house is gonna endear us to the town folk. Uh, how do you destroy the rune, though? Can we, like, just make markings on top of it to destroy it? Or do we have to, like, destroy the foundation itself that the house is built on? I wouldn't think that you could just cross it out. See, I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking that, that if we cross it out, like, not necessarily cross it out, but, like, alter it to where it's not doing the same thing. It's basically, it's a, big it's basically a sigil has been placed like all around this place, so you would basically have to find some sort of counter spell. That would take too long. Oh, mm-hmm. we don't have time. We do not. Too much, too much runes. Lots of town. All right, I think that the first thing that we should do is start talking to townsfolk. All right, so you start making you move on, start making your way into the town. And as you're going, you can tell that the Whispering Way and the Demon Wolves have been here and have basically been fighting each other because you pass dead Whispering Way cultists. You pass dead werewolves. You find some humans that you can't tell whether they're werewolf or Whispering Way, but they are also dead here as well. You also start to notice that while there's a town here, it is uh, basically a ghost town. And as you make your way, as you make your way around the outskirts of town, you pass by these ruins of this small farmhouse and two outbuildings. Roofs have been long collapsed, exposing the splintering frames of gray timber. Uh, Beyond, you see a a sodden and unsown field stretching to the edges of uh, the shattered town of Feldgrau. Barren earth is is scarred with muddy trenches and covered with a perpetual wash of low, swirling fog. Dead trees like pale and wiry skeletons grasp at the gray skies, casting their long, ghostly shadows over the crumbling ruins. 
and you see two women, long, dark hair, black robes, and they look up and they notice you. Well, sister, it appears we have company. I don't think they're wolves like the other ones, but we should be able to kill them in no time. I'll see you next week. Oh, wait. Oh, Do they not smell man. Jobert? <laughs> sure. No, no, don't touch me there. This is my no, no, my no, no square. No, no, don't touch me there. This is my no, no square. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that being whispered to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. I guess consent is sexy. Excuse but me, I, I need mean, to take a drink. <laughs>